now we know we can connect into our server using Envoy and we've loaded npm into our terminal session so we can run it. Now let's start building up this deploy script. So I'm just going to delete everything from here apart from the source line. So for the deploy script, we basically just need to follow the same steps that we did when we brought the website down from GitLab and built it on our live server. So the first thing we need to do is change directory into our project. So we can do that with a cd forward slash var dub 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 html and then the name of the folder that you put your project in. In my case, that was yourdomain.com. Now before we start making any changes on the website, we want to bring the website down into maintenance mode. And this is so any database migrations or even if we're updating the front end dependencies, the users might get a broken UI. So if we just bring the website down while we do the build and then we'll put it live again. Now Laravel comes with a command built in to do just that. So we want to do a PHP artisan down and then that puts our website into maintenance mode. And then the next thing we need to do is pull our code changes down from GitLab or if you're using GitHub or Bitbucket, it makes no difference. So before we do that, we can actually just check that we're on the master branch. Now we should always be on the master branch. We shouldn't be changing it on live, but just to make sure we'll check out the master branch. So we could do a git checkout master. Like I say, we probably don't need this, but it's worth just doing it just to make sure. So once we made sure we're on the master branch, we can just actually pull our new code down. So to do that, it's a git pull. And then that will pull the changes down from our repository. Then we can actually start building the project. So the first thing we'll probably want to do is pull all our composer packages in, if there are any new ones. So we can say composer install. And then obviously we want no dev. We don't want the dev packages on the live server. There's also a few other flags we can pass to Composer, which basically just suppresses the output from Composer. And this will just stop our command line being spammed with output that we don't need. So we can do no, and I'll put this full command down in the comments so you don't have to type it all out if you don't want to. We also want no plugins. We want no progress to be shown. We also want no scripts and also no suggest. Finally, we can also optimize the autoloader. So we can pass a final flag in of optimize iPhone autoloader. And that's it for our composer command. And I will copy this down and paste it in the description. So you can copy it if you don't want to type it all out. So next, we want to migrate our database. So if there are any new migrations, then we want to run them. To do that, obviously, it's a PHP artisan migrate. But we also need to pass it the force flag. And this is because our project's in live mode. If we don't pass it the force flag, it won't run any migrations. So we can do dash dash force. That makes sure the migrations run. And like I said earlier, it's always good practice to clear the cache and cache the config. So to do that, it's php artisan cache clear and php artisan config cache. So that's everything we need for the back end. But we also need to run the front end build as well. So to do that, it's npm install. And then just like we did on the live server, we only want to install production. And then we want to run the production build. And again, like on the live server, it's npm run production. And then finally, now our website is built, we can bring the website back up. So to do that, it's a php artisan up. And there we go, that's a basic deploy script. So we can run this in the command line now and check that this is working. So over in the command line, we can call envoy and run, and then we can just run our deploy script we just made. So deploy, then hit enter. And then over on our website, if we just do a refresh, you can see here we get a 503, which means Laravel has put our website into maintenance mode. And then back over in our terminal, we can, and you can see that our deployment process is running. And there we go, the build process is complete. And it now says the application is now live. Over in the browser, if we just give it a refresh, we can see the application is back up. Here you can see the output of each step of our build process. So this is where we're checking that we're on master, which we already were. We're doing a git pull, but everything was already up to date because there was no changes. This is where we're running composer. And then we're trying to migrate, but there was no new migration, so it didn't matter. And then we cleared our config. And then we started on our front end build, pulling the packages down and then building the project. Great, so now we know that works. 
So now let's actually make a change, push that up to Git, and then pull it down onto the live site. So on the local version of our site, let's just make a silly change here in the admin panel so we can see how this build process works. So if we come under resources, views, admin, we can see the dashboard.blade.php file here. So let's open this up. And then at the top of this file, I'm just going to create a h1 tag. I'm just going to name this super new feature. Obviously, this is just a silly change. This is just demoing the deployment process. So now over in our application, we can see our new h1 tag up here. And this is on our local version of the project. And over on the live server, we don't have the head in there. So let's push this change up to GitLab and then run the deployment process on the server. So over the root of our project on our local machine, if we just do a git status, we can see here our modified file and also our envoy file, which we can also add into our git repository. So what you can do is you can do git add and then you can copy each of the file name and paste them in. But a shortcut is to just use a full stop or a period and that adds everything that's currently not staged. So if I just hit enter on this and then I run git status again, we can see the envoy file and our change to the blade file are now staged. So let's commit these changes. So to do that, we're going to do a git commit. And we're going to pass it the m flag for message. And we're just going to say super new feature added. And then just hit enter. You can see now that commit is complete. And we just need to push this up to our repository. So to do that, we can just do a git push. And as you can see now here, this has pushed our code up to our repository. So over in our repository now, we can see that we have our latest commit here, a super new feature added. And if we just open that up, we can see we have our envoy file, which is obviously all new code, and our new line super new feature. So our change is now up in our repository, and we have it locally. And we can see that on our local version here, we have super new feature. But over our live version, we don't have that yet. And that's because we haven't run our envoy script to do the build. So Let's do that next. So over in the root of our project on our local machine, we can just do an envoy run deploy. So now that's run, if we head over to our browser and we refresh on our live server, we can see we now have our super new feature added in. Now we know we have a fully working deployment system where we can make a change on our local machine, push it up to our Git repository, and then automatically pull it down and make any of the changes that we need. Now taking a look at our deployment script, we can see it's already getting quite large. Now imagine if we was adding extra commands in here, like starting up a queue or running cron jobs and things like that. This is going to get harder and harder to read and understand. So Laravel Envoy has a feature called Stories, and in the next video we're just going to break our deploy task down into a story.